So Alaska is unique in a lot of ways. Uh, th- people can experience things here that that they're not really going to be able to experience anywhere else in the U.S. First off, uh, the climate, the subarctic and the Arctic climates, um, that's just not available in the lower United States. The experiencing the sort of deep cold uh, that we have in Alaska, uh, you know, it can be 30 to 70 below zero here, and you're not really getting those sort of deep cold temperatures in much of the U.S. So that opens up a whole world of winter exploration. Other things that you find here um, that you don't find in such abundance elsewhere is just how expansive the wilderness is. Uh, You can explore for not just hours, uh, not just days, not just weeks, but months. You know, it's one of the few places that that you can do a month backpacking trip and not run into uh, some town. There's still truly spots um, in gates of the Arctic National Park or Denali or uh, the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge where you could spend almost a lifetime exploring without running into other people. Climate change, we're seeing the real effects of climate change in Alaska right now. Um, This can happen in terms of sort of the structure of the ecosystem, so we're seeing those increases in the frequency of fires, for example, and also there are other phenomena like Alaskan Alaskan ecosystems such as permafrost and tundra actually contain a lot of carbon in the soils. There's more carbon in the soils than is currently in our atmosphere. And depending on how climate change impacts these environments, that carbon could be released in the atmosphere or carbon could actually be sequestered into these soils. And especially because Alaska is part of the northern latitudes which are are experiencing um, sort of climate change the most and so these are important sort of testing grounds for us to understand how ecosystems will respond and how we can manage and adapt to climate change. It's important to preserve the wildlife in Alaska and the culture of Alaska um, for future generations for a few different reasons. For one, it's it's a really unique ecosystem here from the whaling villages of um, Kaktovik and Barrow where you know they're a major part of their livelihood is um, off uh, the what they harvest from the sea to the people along the Yukon River who fish for salmon uh, with their fish wheels. The people of Alaska are, you know, you really can't describe them without describing the wildlife. Another reason, just uh, a lot of the animals themselves um, are keystone species that, you know, the whole, uh, there's a real interconnectedness between the plant and animal communities. And if you allow one thing to disappear or push another thing or push something to disappear, allow it to disappear, then uh, everything that's sort of connected to that's connected to it um, is in jeopardy as well. And so, for both both those reasons, it's it's really important to do what we can to keep a healthy ecosystem for for all the native species and the traditional cultures to keep on living. I think a few things we can do is one, just through basic research and, and studying how ecosystems are responding to the change in climate, um, really important to predict and understand how other ecosystems are going to respond uh, to climate change. I think also, um, as we've experienced, uh, conservation is very important. So Alaska boasts some pretty incredible national parks, and these are great places Uh, to conduct research and also to get the public involved with conservation efforts. These amazing ecosystems where climate change is very, the effects of climate change can be very much visible um, to the public and to scientists. And all this will help our study and understanding of Alaskan ecosystems then will help us help inform our decision making moving forward in in how we're going to respond or adapt or change our behavior and practices um, in the wake of climate change. So I, I think the, um, the best way to uh, work to um, protect and preserve what Alaska has to offer everyone is first experiencing it for yourself. You know, I, I think this is sort of paraphrasing John Muir, but uh, he says the clearest way into the universe is through a mountain stream. So what he means by that is, is when you step in and you feel that cold water of the mountain stream, well, you're feeling a connectedness. You know, you are, you're in there, you're experiencing it. Well, if you come to Alaska um, and you explore, you, you know, get away from the roads and you go into the backcountry, um, you're going to feel that same that same sort of connectedness. It's all around you, uh, just engulfed by it. And once you've been exposed to that, 
well then it's easy to you know to to have that urge to say hey this is something that that needs to be protected for future generations it's as easy as signing a petition for that to as complicated or complex as donating a summer um, i would say my final thoughts are just get outside it makes you feel that you're part of uh, the ecosystem not just sort of an outside observer and so uh, that's you know live wild get outside that's really all i have to say <laughs>